Sanders Watch Now. What you need to know from the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Hosted by Cochise County Public Information Officers Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. First Watch on 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your Sheriff's Office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, Public Information Officer with the Sheriff's Office, and Sheriff Mark Daniels. Good morning. Good morning, Cochise County. Hello, everyone. So we've got some housekeeping on football to take care of. There's no game tonight. Yeah, there's no game tonight. Uh, just a couple updates, though. St. David's in the semifinals. Uh, Benson's in the first round of the playoffs tonight. And... Wayne is heading up to Desert View. Should be a good game up there. Desert View is like rank five or seven in the power ranking, seven and one, having a good season. You know, not a real powerful team, but if Wayne can play, I talked to Coach Thomas last night. If Wayne can play a, a good game, very disciplined tonight, they could do well. And then next week will be the final game of the season on the radio. Yeah, we'll be here. Uh, Buenos is home next Friday night against Marana Mountain View to, to close their season out. So we'll be airing that game, though, here. All right, well, we're going to start the show off today with uh, some of the, the bigger news of the of the week. It's... But, but great, we got to stop. I mean, we just, what? Uh, Ken Robinson's <laughs> Oh, yeah, news. you wanted to. <laughs> Bumper mounted deck, deck gun. gun. Deck gun. Now, that's impressive. Chief Jones, I got to give you on that one. I mean, that's, that's more than we got at the sheriff's office. But, yeah, it just sounds impressive, doesn't it? Oh, it does. I, I mean, I had to sit back in the chair and go, wow, that's that's really impressive. Now, if you say the word water gun, is it still as impressive? No, that's what we expect. That's what we expect from fire departments. You know, not deck mounted tech gun. Wa- water water gun. mounted deck gun. Yes, I mean, wow, what a. <laughs> well, I want to give Chief Jones a little harassment on that one, you know? That so, does sound impressive and fun. Yeah, it's kind of scary for the fire department. Yeah. And also, we talked about some of the scams. Uh, Ken Robinson had a scam in the news about, you know, ordering fire departments, uh, yes. things from around the internet, and someone's getting. Uh, getting their hacked right here in Syria. It's just so sad that, you know, there's people that just pray through social media and the cyber world just to take a dollar bill from a citizen that wants to support a good cause or support a fire department, and there's people scamming them. So just be careful, folks. Be vigilant on that because, and, and Ken Robinson has the best advice. Know your source. Know your source you're buying it from, and these off sources are looking just to scam you. And even with the Medicare cards, I've gotten, like, three or four calls in the past two weeks wanted me to go find my Medicare and, Medicare card and give them the number to make sure that my new one is the right one when they mail it to me. Don't do it. That's that's such a personal number. It's like a social security number. Don't do that. Exactly. And exactly. jury duty. Um, you know, we continue to get the cards in um, to the sheriff's office, the green dot cards. They say very plainly on the back and in pretty, you know, distinctive lettering, it cannot be used to pay bonds, um, fines, fees, warrants. I mean, it says that on the back of the card, so don't fall for that one. And the, another one that, that's most recent that happened here in Sierra Vista, um, and the Sierra Vista Police Department got notified, is uh, the door hanger scam. Have you guys heard about that one? So 2.30 in the morning, um, the people had a ring door cam, and they saw that this guy came up and just put a door hanger on their door. So the next morning, they, they look at it, and it says that it's from CCI, and it has a 602 phone number, and it says your home is under surveillance and investigation. Call this number immediately. And so when you call, they try to tell you about an investigation that's going on, and you need to pay this fee, and and people are falling for that nationwide. But it's kind of scary to see that that particular up-close-and-personal contact is happening right here in our backyard. What's even scary at two in the morning? Yes, they're they're approaching your personal property, private property at two in the morning. What a shame! Call us if that happens. Well, absolutely, and I, I don't know that that was initially reported to law enforcement until they posted it on the Ring app, and then people started saying you really need to report that. Wow, it's amazing. Well, over the week we had uh, some some fun things like Halloween, and I know we did trunk or treat in Douglas. We did. There were three thousand, over three thousand. Now, wow. that sounds like a lot of people, but that's not typical because it's typically a thousand plus more but because of all the circumstances that are going on three thousand people there I, I tell you that was just crazy but they managed to eke it out and have the candy last until the last one standing <laughs> that is a lot of candy and, and next year carol we need to get every dentist in town that's going to benefit from this <laughs> this event to donate, donate candy, candy. Yes. If, if they're going to be part of the project <laughs> on a profit side they need to uh, donate some candy but no thank you carol for doing that i heard it was packed it, yeah veronica and the girls did an outstanding job and you know um wouldn't have been able to do it without them so we appreciate all of the hard work that goes into that i agree and yeah. then i'm sorry go ahead with um halloween our halloween pumpkin contest 
We I finished saw that. that. They look so good. I mean, those girls do an amazing job and so innovative. Yes. I mean, creative the way they put those pumpkins. I wasn't the one eye pumpkin one, right? Yeah, Magnum PI. See that? <laughs> I don't think like that. That's Even very the name good. Is creative. Yeah. It is. It is. It's so very um, cool. she won, and so we give them a gift certificate. Um, so we we pay for that. You know, you yes. have that money. You paid for it. Yes. So make sure that we get it to. Um, the winner of that whole thing. But thanks to everybody who participated in that. Thanks to all of you who went online and actually voted. Um, Lots of good comments, so we were pretty excited about that. And then on the downside of Halloween, we did have some Halloween candy theft. We did, and I know it was in social media and on the news, and uh, this was an operation between the Service Police Department Sheriff's Office because these five uh, youth we're going between the county and city uh, doing these acts. And let me just say this. You know, we promote, you know, safe Halloween, trick-or-treating, uh, communities coming together, trunk and treat, like Carol was just talking about. But when we have mischievous criminal acts, when you go out and you start knocking kids to the ground and you start stealing their candy, stealing their cell phones, things like that, and assaulting people, <clears throat> excuse me, those are serious criminal offenses. They truly are. And we, I saw some stuff on social media where people are like, oh, are you really? Are you kidding? They stole candy. That's not a prank, folks. That is a crime. It's a serious crime that let's quit worrying about the people that did it and start worrying about the victims that were actually victimized. A 12-year-old was victimized in this case. So, yes, that is bad. This is where we need parent support on that. And um, if that was your child, yeah, I'm sure you'd be up in arms of that one. So, again, sad overall. I'll be the first to say that. But uh, there's got to be consequences for acts like that. And wearing ski masks. Oh, yes. Actual thugs, you know, instead of like Halloween masks, even wearing ski masks and having a black vehicle and jumping out. And, you know, um, these kids know kind of what that means from watching movies and playing video games. And to have that happen in person, that's just terrifying. Well, it is. And and that's what I'm saying. This, This was just uncalled for. And, and I know between the sheriff's office, service, the police department, you know, we, we put a lot of effort into that that night because when you start victimizing kids, that's the key here, victimizing kids, we are going to hold you accountable. In this case, we did, and, uh, and we'll do it again. I mean, there's got to be a message and a lesson built within this. And if not, it'll only get worse. So uh, kudos to the deputies and officers that handle those cases. And also this week, the Sierra Vista Chamber of Commerce had a take event to lunch day. Yes, so uh, Elsie and Paul from Sierra Toyota, they bought a table up at the Chambers uh, service to luncheon for take uh lunch day. It was packed. I bet there was two, 300 people up there at TMAC and uh, th- myself and two of my, uh, uh, Tom Molina and also uh, Bob Watkins, and I went up there and joined the, uh, the lunch, and really nice lunch. They honored the military, and uh, in fact, the oldest veteran was up there, uh, served in World War II, I believe it was. But either way, um, 98 years old, and you would never know it. I mean, boy, I'll tell you, I was impressed. And then they had the youngest, who was 20-year-old, PFC here stationed at Fort Huachuca. So, again, it was just a nice, uh, and this is a veteran town, to recognize our veterans. So all the veterans that were up there and from all the branches, it was just a really good lunch. It was it was relaxing. Thank you, Elsie and Paul. And um, thank you to all of our vets. We are having the Veterans Day Parade in Sierra Vista on the 11th yes. and also in Douglas on the 11th. So what has um, historically happened for the past um, many, many years is you and the veterans from the Cochise County Sheriff's Office walk in the parade as a contingent. And that's going to be another thing that they're doing this year. We're going to try to get some people over to the Douglas Parade as well because, unfortunately, they're at the exact same time. Um, so try to manage our resources effectively like that. But just a way to show support. It is. And, and this has been a traditional, honorable holiday that we love to participate in. And we've we got a banner. We walked the entire parade, uh, the group of veterans from the sheriff's office. We carry the banner that says the Cochise County Sheriff's Department support our veterans. I just think it's the most honorable parade we do. A lot of them are festive parades. I get it. But this one, actually, to me, is just one of my favorites. And so we'll be out there walking that parade. If you're a veteran uh, and you're one of my team members here or a former alumni from the sheriff's office, come out and join us. And that starts at 9 o'clock on Veterans Day, the 11th. It goes down Fry Boulevard from 7th Street to Veterans Memorial Park. And then there's a ceremony in Veterans Memorial Park when it ends. I believe you're out there doing a live broadcast, aren't you? Yes, I'll be broadcasting live from the staging area in the morning before, so kind of setting And that's a tradition, even out there. I I love that. That's fun. All right, and also coming up, we've got the Victory Over Addiction. The Salvation Army is doing a walk. They are, and that's this Saturday. 
correct, Carol? Uh, yes, tomorrow. Yes, there's so much going on tomorrow. And I know they. I talked to them earlier in the week, and that's on our Facebook for details. But um, shout out to the Salvation Army and all the good work they do over there. I was over there about a week and a half ago uh, doing some things, and they do, they do a lot for this community that most people don't hear about. But, again, I appreciate all they do. So that's dealing. That's tomorrow from eight until one um, at Salvation Army here in Sierra Vista. So that's over addiction. Um, one of the that's a huge thing that impacts our citizens. You know, it nationwide, uh, but focusing it locally um, again, countywide. And then the Legacy Foundation is helping with another super serious um, issue for all of us is mental health. Yes, and we've been working with Margaret and the Legacy Foundation since I took over as sheriff on innovative programs for mental health in Cochise County uh, and the largest behavioral center in the county, which is respected to most rural counties, is county jails. That's sad to say, but real. So we've been working with Margaret. Uh, the Legacy Foundation has dedicated uh, support for the next three years. So we're looking at a program, both an external side and an internal uh, support inside our jail, whether we uh, in our current existing jail or we move into a new jail. Either way, we're looking with the Legacy Foundation to bring experts on mental health to start helping those folks keep the recidivism rate out of our jail. If we can get them structured in the jail, get them out. They have an external program uh, to hopefully keep them productive in the community and not back in our jail where it doesn't serve when it comes to mental health. And I'm not saying people don't need to be in jail. They do. But overall, a lot of our folks that can need the help, I mean, we did a snapshot a couple of years ago of mental health in our jail. 67% were either pre-diagnosed or diagnosed with a mental health disorder. And that kind of sums up the, why we're doing what we're doing. So we're going to work really hard. Thank you to Margaret and your team over there and the Legacy Foundation. They're awesome to our community. And also, the Sheriff's Department has some organizational updates that you'd like to give. We do. We just did a, uh, with Chief Napier, uh, moving back into Pima County. Uh, we've done some promotional updates <clears throat> on the chief deputy side. That'll be Tom Molina. So you'll be seeing some press announcements on that coming out. Tom's 46-year uh, law enforcement professional, retired after 30-some years, and a police chief from service to police department. So he'll be taking the helm of uh, chief deputy uh, Bob Watkins. Bob is moving to the commander. Um, Bob's working on his Ph.D. I mean, he's a very highly motivated individual that's well-respected within the ranks. He'll be moving into the commander spot, which opens up uh, some spots. Uh, Todd Bohorkis, former detective with us, I think he's about 15 years in service, um, worked in patrol, detectives, uh, well-admired, um, well referred by the county attorney's office. They had to get references. And uh, so he'll be moving to a patrol sergeant spot. He's a corporal right now. And then Troy Haymar, who's a detective working general crimes, will be moving in as a corporal back into patrol. So congratulations to all four of them. Uh, we hope we have some more operational changes here in the next few months as we're trying to restructure, refresh, if you want to call it, as we move into 2022. So again, but congratulations to those four. Uh, I look forward to working with all of them closer. And um, so with... Um Tomalin being moved to chief of staff, um, so it'll be all over the entire department. And then one that this is going to be coming out, so keep looking at our webpage and our Facebook, you know, social media. We're going to put that release out um, pretty quickly. Uh, this is all effective come Monday, the yes. 15th. Um, so want to make sure we still have like a week for the, everybody to get offices moved and, you know, settled into where they need to be and, and just game plans put in place. Um, but we are also going to have our um, formal announcement of our chaplain, a new jail chaplain. Yes. And so we're going to have interviews done with that. So take a look at all of that coming up. It's, it's good. It's going to be a, a great way to move forward. Yeah, we just hired him a couple weeks ago, Andy Gould, and just guy's seven foot tall. You can't miss him as he comes down the hall. But just... Just a great guy. He he really is. He just he he came in the testing process, and and just got everybody's attention in a positive way. So we look for good things from him. This week there was an officer involved shooting. <clears throat> yeah, it was a sad week. Um, that ripples community is very hard when you have an officer involved shooting. We this happened Monday night, uh, Monday afternoon, excuse me, and um, our officer is doing fine. Deputy Renee Mesa, uh, he's a 14-year, I believe, uh, deputy with us here at the sheriff's office. A very soft-spoken, uh, spoken, excuse me, individual, uh, st steadfast in what he does. And like I said, I got the call. <coughs> and we hope to uh, have uh, the video body cam released, hopefully sometime next week. And again, don't quote me on that if it doesn't come out. But 
We uh, we want to get that out there to the public and get a debrief. But uh, there's a criminal investigation. We called our CERT team, crim- Critical Incident Response Team, to come out and do the investigation. with a, a multi-agency layered um, uh, investigation into this. So we're not investigating it. Uh, Sierra Vista Police Department is the lead on that, so we're going to yield to them for uh, releases on everything. But again, it goes back to, number one, my, my deputy safe, which is most important to me. I'll just say that. Most important to the community. And um, so the facts will be coming out uh, soon uh, through Sierra Vista Police Department. And uh, But again, uh, one thing I would say is please don't speculate. I know social media loves to get into that speculation game and something we don't do. And I'm not going to do as a sheriff. And uh, I haven't even watched the body camera. Uh, my job is to sit back and support my deputy, and that's what I'm doing right now. So, uh, But I think the facts will speak for themselves, what I've been told. And some of the other things that were um, going on about that same time, it's just been a busy week and a half. It's been a uh, very busy week. You know, so for the border updates, so we could start with uh, you actually um, made contact with Senator Mark Kelly. Yeah, him and I spoke yesterday. Um, but before I speak on that, I mean, we had the, the fatality collision on Saturday night where the 16-year-old um, who was initially, sm- he was smuggling, uh, the, the, was witnessed on the, picking up the illegals. Tombstone Marshal's office went to stop him. He took off in a very erratic manner, which is a common practice here in Cochise County, which is a huge community risk for us. Um, the deputy marshal actually uh, terminated the pursuit, and then 30 miles later, 30 minutes later, um, again, driving in a very erratic and immature way, uh, went through an intersection um, against a red and actually T-boned this car and causing a fatality. This is a sad story, a senseless story, and this ain't the first 16-year-old, 17-year-old we have in our jail. This ain't the first teenager we've dealt with since this border crisis has kicked in. And uh, I talked to uh, the victim's son a couple nights ago, spent some time with him and on the phone, and th- that was tough. He's a registered nurse, works up at St. Mary's, lives here in the county, and he was telling me that he was actually, it was his mom's birthday on Halloween, but then they were going to tandem. That was her favorite place, and uh, so they they drove separate because they had some different stops to make. So he's waiting for his mom. Didn't show up. Tried to call her. Uh, couldn't get a hold of her. And finally, he left. Tandem to go. He lives in Benson to go back to Benson and drove up on his mom's car accident. And it, it was a tough conversation. Uh, it just is it frustrating for me? You bet it is, because it's senseless. It could be avoided. All for smuggling. Uh, and this is part of my concern, part of my passion when I speak loud on this. But so um, him and I spoke about it, and uh, he made some social media posts and, and, and in, a, in, the, in a very emotional way. I talked to Senator Kelly. Uh, again, I spoke to him yesterday and expressed my dissatisfaction with this border issue. Uh, asked him to join the community, the citizens, the sheriffs that are standing up on this. And let's stand united to get a secure border because if we don't, we're going to have more tragedies like that. And so I sent him a bunch of stuff. He was leaving D.C. yesterday. I sent him some attachments, some concerns I had, uh, some documents. So um, he was not resistant to that, but we need to see some action from Senator Kelly. And so we'll see what he does from here. Because they're, these people are, you know, they're young, and not only do they you know, waste their life for $3,000 or however much they're getting paid, um, you know, they've had so many incidents where, they have killed people or they have potentially come close to killing more people. And there's no reason for that. Coming from out of the county in order to do these transports, um, you know, just talking to people who were actually doing that. You know that they were doing it, just got out of the jail. And some of the reasons that they no, oh. they weren't here to do that. They were here. And this is honest to goodness. This is the, the actual quote. We were looking at cows. I really, I mean, you got to have cows somewhere around Phoenix. You don't have to come to Cochise County and say you're looking at cows. Or take pictures of stars. Yes. Um, it, it, we've heard every excuse, folks. And I tell you, what what scares me also is these people are, like you're saying, Carol, they're coming down from Maricopa County, Phoenix, and picking up $500 to $1,000 per person to drive them, per person to drive them back to Phoenix. It's very lucrative. kind of tells you the money behind this criminal enterprise and it's truly cartel smuggling and i tell them you're part of the cartel and you can't go out during the day during the night hit our highways on 92 our county roads down there and not see this they pull in there alongside the road in fact i think i shared this last week where i was down with the governor staff last thursday night and we're blacked out we had our scope truck up and we had groups all around us that we were addressing and then all of a sudden i hear a horn and we're about three football fields off the highway i hear a horn turn around i see a car up there honking the horn 
and that's a signal to jump in the car. So I rammed her, got my car, stopped him. Once again, you got a driver that suspended driver's license, no insurance, fictitious plate. Second one at night, I got on that. Uh, back backseat driver uh, uh, gave a false information. He went to jail to us. We're we're applying that collective effort, which means if Portro applies the immigration side of it, we pl- uh, apply the state enforcement side of it. And the message is, and I tell them, don't come back here unless you want to truly visit our beautiful county. Otherwise, stay out of Cochise County. We're going to charge you if you're committing these crimes. And but it is, and they're they're exploiting these people that are coming down here, bringing their bad acts into Cochise County, and what's harming our citizens, the quality of life. And I've talked to a lot of business, spent time with a business. I won't say which one it is right now. That is truly fed up with what's going on. And uh, I spoke to him Wednesday. I spoke to him again Thursday. Another message I gave to Senator, Senator Kelly. And it, it just, we have to do something different. We just can't keep saying this is not a problem or it's okay. No, it's not the case at all. And I know they got the checkpoints open back up. That's the story in itself. Uh, I spoke with Secret- uh, the Secretary Mayorkas on that one. They opened up the checkpoints. Sadly, very sadly, unbeknownst to I or any other sheriffs or that are on this committee working with this, they pulled the resources from the border. And I, I know that's a big issue here. I'll just tell everybody on this radio show. I mean, we need more agents down here. They pulled over 300, 400 agents out of Cochise County under this current administration. So pulling more off the border, put them on checkpoints, just defeats the purpose of the primary defense. So, again, that's another conversation I've been involved in. A lot of talks, a lot of frustration all the way up to D.C. on that one again. So we'll continue the fight. We'll continue to be strong. But we have to stand united as a community. It's not about politics, folks. I'll be the first to say this is about public safety and your quality of life. And we'll continue that fight. Coming up later in the show, we've got the guys from the cops unit that are going to come in and talk about the Cochise County Sheriff's Charity Ride. But let's kind of mention it while you're here as well. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. And we're giving out four $10,000 uh, awards tomorrow. So $40,000. The cops unit under Sergeant Todd Linnadal, Ray McNeely, Ed Gray, who just got promoted to sergeant here a couple months ago. But, uh, Carol, you're involved in that. The Southwest uh, American Southwest Credit Union and uh, Sean Lawley and his team, Bob, and all them over there. We come together to put this thing together, and I tell you, I couldn't be more pleased. I know this week they've been scurrying around. I saw them yesterday. I go, hey, you want to do lunch? I'll buy you lunch. And then everybody in the radio is going, Sheriff bought lunch? I, I did. I told him I'd buy him lunch. But they're just so busy getting this together because Saturday morning this kicks off. You can still rest your the day of. If you've got a side-by-side of any kind, Jeep, a motorcycle, come on out. We're going to be at the Nissan uh, dealership. Lolly's on Flyblower next to the credit union. You can still register that morning. But they told me they had 400 and some uh, people registered right now. So that's exciting. It's really exciting. It is. I think that this is going to be the biggest one ever. Um, if you're going to be on Fry Boulevard tomorrow morning about 9.05, um, be prepared for maybe a slight delay um, because they're going to have a show of support as they leave Lolly. So that's going to be something to see. Seriously. It's going to be like your own personal, I don't want to say parade because it's not a parade. It's, it's a show a parade. of support. Show yes. of support. Um, so you're going to be able to see that and, and see all of the participants uh, it's going to be exciting. So we're looking forward to that. Over twenty thousand dollars in raffle prizes. I know. And each one is a minimum of five hundred dollars. So come on over and take a look at that. If nothing else, you know, just see what's going on and see how much fun everybody's going to have. And, and the money we we raise, one hundred percent of the community money we raise goes back into the community. We don't have an admin fee. It's a, we're nonprofit folks. We're government. So the money we raise, and this is thanks to the credit union and Lolly's Automotive. They pay our expenses for this event. So every other, uh, every penny goes back into these charities. So we always recognize a veteran, and uh, this year it's American Legion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a youth group. We, we, last year we double-hit it last year for a shop with a cop. So mm-hmm. our kids in that community that need some assistance. And who else do we have, Carol? So we have um, the animal group is Hearts of Gold. Um, then that they're at Animal Rescue. They have the American Legion Post 52, which is the Bill Carmichael Post yes. here in Sierra Vista. Um, then there's the Lobo Club, which is out of Coronado Elementary School, and they're going to use the funds for a track, believe it or not. So that's a really exciting way to do that. And we have the Butterfly Club um, with Wilma. She does the wigs and the assistance for 
people who need it, um, you know, from kids on up through adults and the elderly who have situations that cause them to lose their hair. And then they she ends up helping them with wigs, which are really expensive. They so are. she's pretty excited about this whole thing. I mean, everybody is pretty excited about this. So they'll be there. You'll get a chance to stop by and meet with them if you're part of this um, event. So come take a look and, and really amazing things for nonprofits giving back to the community. And I, we need to get a tally on that. Maybe next uh, show we'll talk about it. The money over the last nine years. Last year uh, was a little different, but next year will be our 10th annual, which we're really excited. We're making big plans for that. But how much money we've donated so far back into the community, thanks to the community. This is truly a community charity event. So, But if you're interested as being a recipient next year, Get a hold of us. Get a hold of the sheriff's office, Carol, uh, or Sergeant Todd Lindahl, and let's let's get you on a list because we want to help you. I'll ask them how much we made the first year versus this year I'll, when they come in. I'll make sure we yes. ask that question. <laughs> that, that's a great. Yeah, it is, and, and even if they know the whole tally, they might. But we got to be pushing two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars back into this community. So I'm very proud that we, as a law enforcement agency, could recycle that goodwill back in our community. Well, before you go, let's talk about your safety message of the week, which is see something, say something. You know, one thing I've I've had a lot of people say over the last week, especially with our officer-involved shooting event um, scenario, where people have asked me, a lot going on, Sheriff, you know, and there is. I'll be the first to say we're in a kind of a unique time. This is a great county to live. It's a very safe county to live. I'll be the first to put that out there, too. But we have our challenges right now with the border we just talked about, uh, some uniqueness with people. Drugs are another thing we're being challenged with. So there is a lot going on in these communities. I had a business owner call me yesterday and say, Sheriff, can you guys do some extra patrols? We're getting some vandalism. What All the way from vandalism to serious crimes. I'm not saying vandalism is not a crime. It is. But there's some serious things going out there. Call us. See something. Say something. Let us know you're not bothering us. I tell people, well, I don't want to bother you. Listen, you can save a life. Please call us. That's what we're here for. It cost you nothing to call us. Call, give us that call. Let a deputy or a, uh, an officer go to the scene. Check it out. We work very close with uh, law enforcement to include our troopers out there. We'll check it out. And um, you might be opening a door of something that you're saving a life. And that's most important. So see something, say something. That's my safety message. It'll always be something I want to impress on the community. Well, Sheriff Mark Daniels, we thank you for coming and talking to us today. Thank you, Gray. Thank you, Carol. Good luck, Buena, tonight. And everybody, have a safe week. It's First Watch on KWCD Country, and it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. It's First Watch now. Hosted by Public Information Officer Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. On 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your Sheriff's Office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, Public Information Officer with the Sheriff's Office, and our next guests from the COPS unit, it's Corporal McNeely and Sergeant Linendahl. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So you guys are from the COPS unit. Before we get to the charity ride, let's talk about uh, what is the COPS unit? The COPS unit's a, a unit that was developed or came to be in 2013 uh, when the sheriff was elected. He wanted a unit that would go out and, and positively interact with the community. It started off with a community resource officer, uh, was Deputy Hatfield um, Allison. And shortly after she became the community uh, resource officer, he approached me about developing a unit that would be responsible for having positive interactions uh, within the communities uh, throughout Cochise County. And you do things year-round for our community, but at this point, you guys are working on the Cochise County Sheriff's Charity Ride, which is tomorrow. So kind of give me a history of how the charity ride started up. Sure. So back in 2013, uh, we again were approached by the sheriff um, wanting to do something, uh, some sort of event that would kind of put us on the map, uh, so to speak. So Deputy Hadfield thought of an idea of having a, a motorcycle charity ride, and in doing so, we would try to benefit uh, either local charities, and, and, and at the time, it was actually uh, the schools within Cochise County. So we put the uh, first charity ride on in 2013. Got some donations uh, for that. Uh, it was a great event, though. We still had a good time, uh, and we were able to give the proceeds to our schools that are within Cochise County as far as county schools. Uh, and then at the time, school shootings was a big thing that was going on back then, so we thought, you know, any extra money that we can give them to try to upgrade security or get new cameras or things like that would be a good idea. So that, that's how it started off. And this year you guys are giving $10,000 to four charities. How much did you give that first year? 
that first year, I want to say, after dividing them up between the schools, I want to say it was like three hundred, four hundred dollars a piece. So it's like grown. That. So yeah, it, it has grown <laughs> considerably. It, it, it has. There are going to be four charities this year, but before we get to who they are, let's talk about the actual ride itself and what's involved tomorrow morning. Uh, you need to pre-register right now online, and you can find that at cochise.az.gov slash sheriff, and just click on the charity ride. It'll take you right to the tickets. But once they register, uh, Corporal McNeely, how will, they, how will they come to the event, and where is it, and when does it start tomorrow? All right, so it's going to be at Lolly Nissan again this year, and registration is going to start at 7.30 in the morning and run until 8.45 in the morning. We'll kick it off with the national anthem at 9 o'clock that's going to be sung by a, a very talented uh, high school girl, and then everybody's going to take off on the ride. There'll be two. There'll be an on-road route and an off-road route. The off-road route's going to be for Jeep, side-by-sides, any four-wheel drives, on-road route, motorcycles, or any other vehicle that wants to participate. After that, they'll roll back in between 1 and 2.30, and they have chances to put in for all the amazing raffle prizes we're going to have, and I'll go into that after this. But uh, then we're going to, at 3 o'clock, the sheriff will uh, present the four charities with their $10,000 checks with uh, the ASCU and Lolly, and then we'll do the raffle prizes. At 3 o'clock when this ends, you also get some, some cool swag for being in the ride. You do. You get a, in the very beginning, you're going to get a, a pin. And then at the end of the ride, you're going to get a challenge coin that was personalized for just this event. And I've seen that challenge coin. It is a really good-looking coin, so you'll want to get on that. So let's talk about the raffle prizes. Do you have to be a part of the ride to be able to participate in the raffle prizes? You do not, but you do have to be present to win at 3 o'clock. Okay. So that being said, tell us some of those raffle prizes that we have. There are 26 raffle prizes that you do have to be present to win at the drawing at 3 o'clock. You can put in for those all day. Tickets are going to be one ticket for 10, six for 50, or 14 for $100. And like I said, there's 26 of them. They range from $500 to $1,400 value. Uh, some of the big ones is we have a Kodiak Tactical Series 59 by 40 green gun safe with the black American flag on it. We've got three barbecues, five tool chests. We have a $1,000 gift card from HD Motorsports. We have a $1,000 gift card from Bob Moses Ceramic Coating. And, of course, tons of other awesome prizes along with that. That sounds great. Those are some really good prizes. There's also a, a gun that's up for a raffle. Correct. And this is the one prize that you don't have to be present to win. Okay. And uh, we'll do a drawing for that at the end. It'll be the last one drawn. And it is a uh, AR-10-308 Bear Creek Arsenal. And it was donated by West End Pond. And then a scope was do- donated by Vortex to put on it. If you want to participate in the raffles, you need to get there by 3 o'clock. The ride starts tomorrow morning at 9, and registration is online. You have to go to cochise.az.gov slash sheriff and click on the charity ride and get your tickets. How much do tickets cost? The driver with the vehicle is $17. Passengers are $10. And kids 12 to 17 or $5, and kids 11 and under are free. And also, you don't have to actually go on the ride if you want to support the charity ride. You can actually just purchase your ticket and stay at home, and that money still does go to the charity. So a lot of offices do that, I've noticed. So that's another option for people to help out as well. Correct. And they can also buy a shirt, whether they're going to be at the ride or not. And that's available online. You can get a short sleeve for $22, and that's available in a cotton polyester mix or you can get the sport tech like we had last year and then you can get long sleeve as well for twenty six dollars in both the cotton or the sport techs all right let's talk about the charities now there are four charities this year which is again up from last year last year we had three charities i know there's a registration but there's a different category that you guys like to give the money to every year yeah that's correct so uh each year we we kind of open up our application process uh to to be a recipient of our or a beneficiary uh, of the charity ride. So we, we typically post that the application process is now open and then charities throughout the county submit applications to us. Once the deadline comes up, we then sit down, myself, uh, Corporal McNeely, we had another person in our COPS unit, Deputy Gray, who just recently got promoted, so Sergeant Gray now, uh, and then we typically have Carol sit in with us. We review the applications. We try to pick charities that go in line with something that benefits kids, something that benefits veterans, and then something that benefits animals. Uh, in doing that uh, this year, we couldn't decide whether the the charity for the kids be the Lobo Club, which we ended up choosing, or 
uh, the Butterfly Club, which uh, supports uh, women and kids that, that have cancer. We couldn't make the, that hard choice to try to value one uh, more than the other. So uh, I made the decision that we were going to have four charities this year, and, and I was confident that uh, Corporal McNeely could uh, go out there and secure those extra funds for us, which he absolutely did. So you mentioned two of them. Let's mention all of the, the, the beneficiaries this year. The first beneficiary we have is the Post-52 American Legion. We then have the Butterfly Club, the Lobo Club, and Hearts of Gould, uh, which is the animal rescue that, that we chose to help this year. The beneficiaries get a nice big check at the end, and that will be presented also at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And we have some sponsors that we'd like to thank because that's how this happens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, w- without our sponsors, we would have a much harder time making this such a successful event. So um, we want to thank Lolly Automotive and ASCU, or American Southwest Credit Union, who have been instrumental in, in supporting this and allowing us to pretty much give 100% uh, of the proceeds that we get back to these charities as, as they kind of cover the costs associated with putting on this event. And the community really stepped up with donations as well this year. They did. They were amazing. Uh, we just got to thank all the businesses, all the way from Wilcox, Benson, Douglas, Bisbee, Service Area, of course. But the whole county just came together. Businesses everywhere throughout the county came together to get that fourth charity added and raise that extra $10,000. So we're able to give each charity 10000 this year and do a total of 40000 which is up 10000 from last year. The Cochise County Sheriff's Charity Ride is tomorrow. You get your tickets online, cochise.az.gov slash sheriff, and then click on the charity ride. Get your tickets there. Get your T-shirts there. Corporal McNeely, tell us what's going to happen tomorrow, where they need to be. Okay, so you need to be at Lolly Nissan at 730 in the morning. That's when registration starts. We're going to kick off the event at 9 o'clock with the national anthem, and then we'll head out for the ride. And you must be present to win at 3 o'clock for all of the raffles, except the gun. You don't need to be present to win. Correct. All right. Well, we thank you guys for coming in today. Thank you, Grady. Thank you for having us. That's Corporal McNeely and Sergeant Lindendahl with the Cops Unit at the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. It's First Watch on KWCD Country, and it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. You've been listening to First Watch with the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Hosted by Cochise County Public Information Officers Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. Join us again next Friday morning, 7 to 8 a.m. First Watch. What you need to know from the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Only on 92.3 KWCD. 